This is ITP115, Programming in Python, and I'm going to talk about indexing strings and slicing strings. So the first thing to know is that sequences, like a string, which is a sequence of letters, can be indexed. So you can talk about the, Z, the first letter, well, it's really the number zero letter, the zeroth letter, um, since we start counting with zero in computers. Um, and the next one, the index one letter and the index two, all the way up to the number of items minus one. So here is what that looks like with the string spam a lot stored in the variable string variable called word. So the S is at index zero, the P is at index one, et cetera, all the way up to the T at index seven. So there are eight letters from zero to seven. Using indices, we can directly access single items from a sequence. Okay, so we put the index in between these square brackets, the square bracket operator, and we can talk about that particular item in the sequence. So here's the example, back to our spam a lot uh, example. Um, MSG holds the word spam a lot, and now we're looking at MSG square bracket two. That's gonna pull the index two item or letter out of this string, which is an A. And if we print it, then A shows up. Similarly, if we pull the MSG square bracket six, that's going to be this O here. And if we print that out, we get the printout of O. Now you have to watch out. If you ask for MSG square bracket 13, there isn't one. And so you're going to get an error. And it's not the print that causes the error. It's the trying to get to that element in the first place because it just isn't there. And we call this index out of range. Um, so the only numbers that you can use for an index are zero up to the length minus one of the sequence. Um, and so you get this out of range or out of bounds error if you go beyond that. Now, it's a very common mistake. Let's say you have a sequence of five items. What's the index of the last item? If you're not thinking, you say, oh, number five, and it's not. The last item is always one less. So if a sequence has five, I five items, those are zero, one, two, three, four. Four is the last one, always one less. Oh, and there's a little note down here that says, um, we can actually use negative indexes. In Python, you can count backwards from the end of the string. So if you say minus one, you really mean we're counting from the other end. Um, few languages support that. So we're, we're really not going to teach you that. Um, you can, but we're not going to go there. So now we're going to talk about slicing. What we know so far is with the square bracket and a single number, we get a single item from the sequence. Just put in one index, we get one item. But Python supports what's called slicing. You can get multiple items from a sequence. And we'll use the example of strings, but um, it'll later work on lists and other things that we have that are sequences. Okay, so here's the, the syntax. You have whatever your variable name is, and then square brackets, and now we have two numbers separated by a colon. And the first number is the starting position, and the second number is the ending position, but it's really one past the one that you want to end on. And that last part can be a little bit confusing, but we'll see some examples. And it works out really well in computation, which is why they set it up that way. Okay, so here is us taking some slices out of this spam a lot string. 
So the first example, we have MSG, and we're assuming the string is stored in the variable MSG still. Okay, two colon six. All right, here's the two, that's the starting letter, A, M, A, L, and we stop before we get to the six, right? Six is one pass where we're going. So this is just A, M, A, L. So the next example, if we have from index three to index four, but we don't include the four, it just gives you the M, okay? So we start at three and we don't go past three. And in the last example, we go zero to seven, and that looks like it might be the whole string, but remember, this number is supposed to be one past the end of what we want. So in fact, it stops at six. We get spamalo, no T, because it does not include the one that has the index here. It goes up to, but not including that index. So if you want the whole string, then you say msg square bracket zero, that's the start, colon eight is the length. There is no index eight, but remember this is one past the end, so that's good, we'll get the whole string that way. And there it is, spam a lot. So in the previous example, we knew that the string was eight characters long. If we don't know that, then we can use a function. There's a function called len that tells us how long the string is. So we just say msg, the message, square bracket. We're gonna have two numbers, zero for starters, and the end one, right, the one after the colon, we use this function to get the number which is the length, and then that works out to give us the whole string when we slice. Now, this is a little cumbersome. For starters, we're listing the MSG twice, um, and you gotta figure getting the whole string is probably something we do very often. So there's some shorthands. Those are on the next slide. If you wanna start at the beginning, you can just omit the zero. And Python reads that as start at the beginning. So, for this to go zero up to three, but not including the three, we get SPA, and there it is. The next example, we can also omit the number after the colon. So if you wanna go from index number four, there's the A, all the way to the end, A-L-O-T, then if you don't put a number there at all, Python figures out, okay, we'll go to the end. And so now we have a natural way to include the whole string, which is to not put a number before the colon or after the colon. And it looks terrible and a lot of languages wouldn't take it, but Python's great with this. We have the variable name, square brackets, colon, unsquare bracket. And that's it. Now, there's something about this that you should know that won't matter now, but it will matter later. And that is that this makes a copy. Because after all, why would you need to say, give me the whole string? We had the whole string in the first place. Why couldn't we just print MSG? And you can. But in this case, with the square brackets and the colon, it makes a copy. Now, in the case of strings, it doesn't matter because you can't change the string or the string copy. Um, but later on, when we do things like, uh, we'll do the slicing on lists that you can change, then it's gonna, there'll be times when we wanna have a copy um, and that's how you get it. So let's see, the, uh, the index in a string is also useful if you're looking for something. So here's the find um, function and the find function will return the index of what you're looking for if it finds it, or minus one, if not. So here's the example down here. We have some kind of a string. We say dot find, and then substring is the thing we're looking for. And the index where we find it goes into this variable index, or minus one if you can't find it. So this is sort of the reverse process of what we were just doing. Instead of giving the index and getting the string there, 
we're going to give the substring, the slice, and ask the program to find out where is it, what is the index. So here's an example. We'll start with the string. Uh, the variable for it is food, and what's in there is fish taco, and we've got it spelled out here in, by the indexes so you can see exactly what's going on. If we say food.find a C, well, that's at index number seven. So that's what gets returned, index seven. If we say food.find a space, there's a space at index four. So that's what gets returned. And then, for example, if you wanted to get the word after the first space, okay, well, we know the first space is at four. So index plus one, that's now going to be five. And this is now the slice that we're doing just before. Food dot five colon nothing is going to go five to the end, taco. So new food is now taco, the first word after the space. And this worked on our string fish taco. But the way we've got this code written, we'll find the space and get whatever is after the space. So now you need to know that there are two categories of sequences. Mutable, which means changeable, which means you can modify single items in the sequence. And the other kind is immutable, unchangeable. You cannot modify single items in the sequence. So for example, strings are immutable. You cannot change a string. So here we have a variable word, which has the string game in it. And if you can say print word, sure, why not? But you cannot say word bracket zero and set it equal to something else. We could print word bracket zero, which is a G, but we can't change the G to an L and turn this word into lane. The string is not mutable. You cannot change it to anything. So if you can't change a string, hopefully you're curious, well, what sort of thing can you change? And that will have to wait until the next lecture on strings. Oops, I mean on um, lists. So we'll see about that next time.